Right out. We're wiring another link. Storm. Using stock link looms. So we're starting with the link fly leads or unterminated leads. Hopefully you've got all the connectors in there. Pull them away from the station now. Not really. They look like terminals for the pipes. I'll just crank some. We don't really need these on the on here, we just pop them out. Yes. Yeah, sure yeah. What have we got there, Jace? Um we've got one crimped on. Yeah. But it's they're not really pushed to seat, are they? A pull to seat, no, push to seat. Yeah, and um, and that's not a power, and that's not a power. Those are triggers, and the ones for the coil, the ones for the injector. This is an injector plug, so that would have been interesting. I don't think it would have worked. No. No. <laughs> no. I think that's a, a no go. No. <laughs> okay. He's doing well. He did well. So, what we're going to do. Is number two wouldn't have run very well. No, <laughs> but they all numbered up good. So, you, what you're going to do is minimize the loom of what you don't need. Um, we have oil pressure sensor, the three pin. Mm -hmm. We've got the, the, the R8 Audi coil. Uh, I wonder if we can have them around if we have to have them backwards or we can run these ones forward. We can actually run these ones forward. Um, two wire idle speed control unit, like this one, so that's simple. I think we'll put in a wire for a, for a pressure sensor, for a fuel pressure sensor, even if we, it doesn't get one fit, at least put the wire in. Air temp sensor, make it maybe a little bit extra so it can go, but I would like it modified into the throttle body. Apart from that, it's just, it's a normal wiring loom doesn't need the alternator in it um doesn't need the alternator in it, need the in it. i haven't decided on auction sensors uh and you can show us how we can show our viewers how to wire up those coils because we've wired plenty of link looms before haven't we sure yep sure it's all yours. So we'll run down the sides of the fuel rails. Come around to the coils. We'll leave the little covers, little plastic covers in here. So we can, they can be zip tied in to the plastic covers to each of the coils. I'll get your 20 series intake manifold. Seeing it's a 20 series it's going on to. And you're happily pulling wires out. Show us how we pull the wires out of those plugs. So I can see you're just removing extra wires. No. You know, I'm doing this one because I run out of wires on that one. <laughs> um, might be a minute or so. I've got to find the wire. There we go. Did you use video, man? That's so much trouble. You gonna be long? Your fat fingers, okay? Oh, where are we putting the map sensor? Viral. Oh, see, that was hard. Oh, yeah. right. So you pop the little lock out. Pop push, the lock, the little... push the little locky thing out, and just pull the wire out, just like that. Just like that. And when you want to put it in, you just push it back in. Yes. Easy, eh? Push it back in. How will we? How's pro, your loom looking? Pro tip for the day, this plug and this plug aren't the same. This is a TPS, I think. Yeah, TPS. This is a coil plug. Yeah. And that would be why I you don't nine. actually have nine. No, nine. Nine. One's a TPS, yeah. Are no. right. hey, you having fun doing a custom loom every time we do a loom? It's different to the other looms that we've done. Oh, yeah. Hey, have you yet to do two looms the same? No. Oh, I'm wiring a Lexus. Yep, I'm wiring a Lexus, yep. But this... Everyone's different. So he's got a loom looking kind of like a loom. 
He's got some wires to, to it's braid it up. And four injector blocks. Ready to crimp things together. And he's about, he's just sorting out plugs and he's going to put some wires into the coils. And he just wired some coils the other day. And funnily enough, since then he's wired another loom. Uh, so he, so Jason probably has forgotten. Yeah. Though he knows exactly where to find the picture. On the 2J. Do <laughs> <laughs> the door there. Do the door there. My wiring that I made the other day for the 2J. Which these coils are funny enough out of. So you've got some Audi coils that you take off a 2J. Yeah. Yeah, good. I'm stuck on this. Mm. <laughs> the air temp that was uh, going with this loom looks like this one. So we happen to already have a throttle body here where we've taken the traction control off and fitted the air temp sensor to it. So that's handy for our wiring, so we'll just clip onto that one. It's a six pin Deutsch plug that I need. That's a four pin Deutsch plug. Oh, four pin? Oh, that's for your can. Oh. Can lambda. Because he's got a can lambda. Right, I need to put that. Yep. So there's actually a can lambda it's in this. So I don't need that right now. Nope. It's not so that. I would, what I would like is the other one, two, three, four, five, six, the other two and a half plugs. Uh, there is a chance that I may have used them on my one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same plug. Help, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what's this one? Has it got a number on it? That's a crank angle. Crank angle. You need one of those. I need that, yep. That's a water temp. There was, there was definitely some extra plugs and I just, I had the whole bag. I had the big bags. So. Your ones will have numbers on them. If I've got numbered ones on my loom, I'll, you'll know if I've stolen them from you. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. So the next step, of course, is to ter terminate, and you've still got to cut some lengths. This one's still cam angle sensor seems to be a little bit, a little bit long. It's all right. I'm sure I have a pair of scissors and yeah, trim it up. You can trim it. Okay, but this one's also still a bit long too. And this one is still a little bit long as well. Oh, yeah. You can make that a little bit longer if you, you could leave that long if you wanted. It wouldn't hurt to leave that one long. Well, you want, it's just in case it needs to come, because it's oil pressure. Just as nice, it needs to come down here like this, because it sits under there. So maybe leave that one long, put a bit of an extra length on it. So we're using uh, Audi R8 coils, and there are a heap of different numbers for that coil that will cross over. So our pin out, what's our pin out there, Jace? Pin, uh, pin, pin one is power, pin two is an earth signal, and four is an earth again. So that was, uh, pin, pin one's a power, yeah. and then number two is normally a signal earth, but you're wiring it to chassis ground, don't you? One of them is a signal earth, and we're wiring them, I don't know which one's which. They're all, they're all going to chassis earth. They're all going to chassis or, a, or an engine earth. On the factory, one of the earths is listed as, as being a signal ground. We always wire it, just both of the earths to the chassis. So that's on pin um, two, and four. two and pin four. The plugs actually have numbers on them, just there. One, two, three, four. And that's so when you look at them this way, it's, it's from the flat end, it's one, two, three, four. So if you're looking for it's on the, car out there. I just look out there. the 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 pin out, <laughs> the car out there. <laughs> One over bit earlier on the two J. On the car that we're not speaking about, we we have taken the pin out of that. Sometimes it's easy for us, and we're quite fortunate. We can just walk over to the car, look at the colours of the wires, and work out the pin outs. 
But if that isn't available, uh, then James will go crimp some wires, make it all look good, and then we'll get ready to fire it all up, do some testing. TPS and uh... how long are you having that TPS? Is it like going to be in the next engine bay or something? Oh, you, you carry it. You keep going on about me and not having enough distance between the things. So there you go. I think that's plenty long enough. It's like a high ace van one when you mount it down on the yeah, side. Over here. Yeah. Over here. No, it's, it's going to be about that long. About okay. that long. It's about that long. I just haven't cut the excess off yet. It's looking good. How are you getting on with the the coils? Are all wired up? Yes. And do they need an external igniter? Well, if you try, if you're sitting in the <laughs> plug here, apparently. <laughs> no. There's this plug here, Kelvin. Where's it? Where's it gone? Yeah. Um, I don't know how we did that. That yeah. was a mistake, wasn't it? It's almost like, oh, I'm not going to do <laughs> so, so do these coils need an external igniter? No. A built in, built, in. built in igniter. Apparently a smart coil. Smart coil. Yeah. Yeah. That loom is looking quite lovely. You've done really well. You've been hammering today. So that's your earth. So what have you done with your earths? You've tucked them out over here. And you're going to top them back down there, and they're going to come down directly to the side of the cylinder head. There'll be a hole on this side, of course, where they had to out of the cover for the coils. The and the other side. side will need to have one cut. This one's sort of the same. Yep, so that gives a nice short track for the earths. And uh, you've got this plug here for fuel pressure, this which is sort of planned for that front banjo bolt. The ghost one. But it would need a cut if it does ever go in, so. Yeah. Technically it doesn't have, this wasn't set up for a fuel pressure, but We've allowed for it just in case to have a fuel pressure sensor. It can give better mapping. Map sensor going to the back somewhere, up to onto the firewall. Because it's 20 series, of course, the what I normally would do is run the vacuum hose from the front. I'd actually drip it straight through underneath. And it would go right under the plenum and then up. Because this one is for the fuel pressure rig. Mm. Ah. And that, that's for the, the brake booster, even though we've seen it put in different places. Yeah. Now you put it in here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's the throttle body. It's in here, put it into that. Yeah. yeah. I'm still trying to work out where the man managed to get uh, coolant into the intake manifold for another customer. The guy with the cranking timing today. Coolant into the intake manifold? Yeah, he's put a hose. Yeah, so don't do coolant into the... There's no coolant that goes into that plenum. No. I don't know. It's special. It looks fantastic. It'll be running tomorrow. You'll have that done, ready to go. Awesome. Well done. We have an engine, and Jace has been hammering away this morning. He's decided to have half a day, which which is just fine because we work when we want to work around here. Hmm. And I'm gonna drive five and a half hours in some other direction. There's a chance I'm driving five and a half hours because my camper van isn't very fast. <laughs> I'm leaving at lunchtime and I'm drinking I'll get to my station before you. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> so Jace is going to hammer out the relays and fuses. The wiring loom is in the last stages of being sorted. It'll be run and then the shrink wrap will be shrunk. And he's just doing a bit of a plan. And he will be back on Monday to finish it off. And, and I will be back on Monday to do whatever I'm doing. He's been hammering along. It's looking really good. We're keeping this one pretty simple because that's what the customer asked. Keep it really basic. And it'll be a three or four wires to connect up and make it go. So it's really, really easy to put in the vehicle, start it, make it work. And it will be running before it leaves here. So this loom we know will work. We'll put some numbers in the computer, which will actually be emailed over. The, not the computer, the, the tune will be emailed over. So the customer will be able to just to plug in some numbers, 
into his computer so and make it go. Don't want me to send this computer over as well. No, don't send, don't send my computer as well. <laughs> That'll be bad. <laughs> well, bad for for me. With you. Hmm. Both for me too. Very good. What are you doing for? Yeah, I would. All right. We'll catch you Monday. Sure. Fun. The engine is wired. An ECU is wired. There's some relays and fuses. <coughs> I'm dying. Can you do it quietly? No. Amazing. We're going to need the digger to make a hole big enough for you, boy. Yeah, you can think about laptop. Laptop. I'm going to do a setup video right now. So if you're interested in that, setting up a Storm G4X with a UZ. Because he hasn't done an X before. And he was, uh, when he doesn't die, trying, about ready to hit it with a hammer because he doesn't like the new software. Probably due to the fact that he doesn't have the skills to do it yet or he hasn't been showing how it all works. He'll like it once I'm done because it'll make more sense. Yeah, it'll make more sense. Don't worry, trust me. Oh, some ears, good idea. We have the ECUs now set up and we're going to start it. Oh, earmuffs on. I've done this right, this should be the start button. It doesn't crank over. See that? Fuse. Fuse. So we're gonna make it go. So we'll put the powder here. Yes. Relay's go click click. Jace. Over there. So fuel pump is the. So we got start in on the end. Yeah. Ignition. Then we've got ignition. Yeah. Then we've got fan, fan, and yeah. fuel pump. And you've got an eyelet for the power in. So okay. we'll put an insulated stud on that one. Does that sensor have test written on it? That's my test, test um, sensor. Yep. Oh, it's okay. Run, run! It you're, runs! You're talking and I... You can't hear me. Really I can't start here now because I've got my hearing on. It's actually quite pleasant. Hmm. What you're saying is that your test sensor? It's my test sensor. Oh, that's probably why it doesn't work so well then. Yeah, it's that one that might have been flooded with a jet boat. Oh. Hmm. That'll do it. Alright, let's do the doors. So then coils work. I think it looks quite good that way. That'll click in nicely onto the loom. If he wants to put a fuel pressure in it. Uh, anything that Oh, we've got a spare wire here. That's you're going to be your. Um, you're just going to put a single pin on it. Yes. Just a single. So AC, if it ever wants to go in, and, it, and it's marked over in the ignition somewhere, in the in the dash plug. Go on. Cool. Easy. So water temp sensor goes to that dash plug. Blue wire here. So from there, it's a blue, blue yeah. white. Blue white. <coughs> Good. Air temp. You've you've. Um, Got the just the Bosch plug. Yep. Was there an air temp in the box? Yeah, that was the plug that was in the box. That was the plug that's in the box. Cool. Oh, no, actually, I think there was an air temp in the There's box. There's an air temp in the box, so it can be mounted, so like ours, or it can be mounted in the intake pipe. 
Yeah, he's got. He's got. Yep. Some... Yep, perfect. A startling? We've got to supply startling too, eh? Oh, I was gonna I was gonna make a start loom, which I haven't made a start loom. Mm. So we've got to do a start loom as well. Which is one of our generic start looms will be, be perfect. Start and knock centre loom will be perfect. That's why it's how it's wired. So. Yep. So we just do the generic, the normal start loom. Okay, so you're gonna go through and shrink it all. Do you like these coils? Are you, are you getting used to these coils after doing the JZ with them? Do you find they clip down okay? On the JZ it did on this, doesn't seem as nice. The rubber catches on the UZ a little bit, eh? Mm. Oh. They're alright, they're, they're alright. Yeah, I think you've just got to make sure that they do clip down properly. And then they seem to be pretty good. So it seems to run pretty good actually. That tune was actually pretty sorted. Map sensor. So the idea is mount it. You've got plenty of length. He could mount it either up in here, if you want it. Well. And here. Here, or on the side of. Over here. Or on a firewall. Screw it up on the firewall. The lead is that long. Yeah, so. There. Up here on the firewall. Over here on the firewall. Yep, perfect. Air temp's got enough length, everything looks pretty good. And simple, simple. Yes, for your coils, go. Oh, yes. One's on your dipstick thingy. Yes. And one's on the same on the other side, pretty much. Yep. And then some zip ties in here. Yeah. To, to, so, it, so it clips zip around ties. nicely and doesn't get rub on that cam belt. Just leaves that in there with a zip tie to it. And a little, a little oh, nip. And may have to cut the cover on the side. Oh, yeah, one of that side's got a coil, normal coil lead yeah. cover. So it's cut the same thing on this side. And if you put the water. Uh, Fuel pressure. Yeah. Yeah. From that. Yep. Well, put a on it or whatever. Yep. Awesome. You can shrink your dink it. Don't send the ECU with it. That's our ECU. <laughs> it's all configured for a one UZ. So the next one you wire, just wire it exactly the same, please. I'll just leave that in the box. Perfect. The wiring thing is. Awesome. No, the next one I'll wire, I'll have to, it'll be completely different and have... Yeah, it will be. Because we never do the two the same. <laughs> it'll, have, it'll, have a, just, it'll be supercharged in the, in the, and it'll have... As long as the outputs are in the same place, I don't care. It's not about the way the wires on the engine go, it's the configuration. Oh, it'll have, it'll have a six watt and then a... Factory I'll speak control on the next one, so that would be completely wrong. <laughs> so this one's all done. It's coming off the engine, it's going into a box, and off to Australia. <laughs> <laughs>